Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts now. Absolutely. Mike is a very sensitive subject, and so we're going to discuss that today on the edge. If I can find my postcard brains, welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney. It's me and Michelle Webb from Australia, Bisbane, Australia. I'm excited to have her here. We're going to talk about money, but we're going to talk about money in a constructive kind of way. And we're going to talk about the good things about money. Um, so many times people are afraid of that subject. They feel that is an indicative of their character, of their well-being, of their stature. They give it way too much control. And money mm -hmm. is an energy. And if we mm -hmm. don't frame it in the right way, it can be very destructive. Let's think That's about funny. our generational trauma when it comes to money. Who handled money? Was it mama? Was it daddy? Was it that they fear they never had enough? Was it the philosophy that it grew on trees? Uh, you know, do you have to work yourself into the ground or do you teach money how to work for you? So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about all that and more. Welcome to The Edge, Michelle Webb. Thank you. Yes, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, the unfortunate thing is people are very um, bad judges of themselves in terms of where they are currently with their financials. And it's such a sad thing because when we're young, I mean, something like 90% of couples fight about money. Now, if you're a young child and you're growing up in an environment and your uh, your personality and your character is forming, by the time you've reached the age of between five and seven, you've actually developed your personality and your beliefs. And if you're growing up in a in a family that's arguing about money, you personalise all those sorts of things as being your fault. You, as a young child, should be doing something to help them. If you weren't there, you wouldn't. Uh, you know, you, they wouldn't be having their problems. And you personalise everything that you're, they're actually saying and make it your own, which means when you grow up as an adult, all of a sudden you're growing up with all these beliefs, um, money is evil or money only causes, only evil people make money, good money, good people don't have money. And if you've got any religious background as well, that just adds another layer because they use religious verses as in the one about the camel, uh, you know, it's easier to get, uh, well, the rich person, you know, it's easier to get to heaven um, for a person who's not rich as opposed to for a person who's rich. Um, and then there's a verse I can't quite remember off the top of my head about the, um, about getting through the eye of the needle. It's uh, easier to be, uh, make it to heaven than it is for a camel to make it through the eye of the needle, which was all based on, um, uh, the way they used to live, which eye of a needle was in fact a, a a passageway that the camels used to they used to block off to protect the city, and they would actually have the top barrier on uh, of the wall of the door closed so that people couldn't get through, and the camels had to take their loads off and go underneath to be able to make it through. It was called the eye of a needle, but a lot of people take religious stuff as well and make it as an extra. You know, yeah, and, and they also say that you know money is the root of all evil. Yes, and it, and that's not true. It's what no. you do, it's what you do with the money. It is always what you do with the people. Good people have money, and bad people have money. It's sort of like a race. You judge uh, everybody in this type of uh, like all people in a specific country all bad because you know one or two that are really bad. Or is it just that the people in the country have some people are good and some people are bad? Same with money. Money is just a tool. It's just a tool. It's just a tool. Um, but when you look at your finances, now it's hard to save, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it. Let's keep it real. You know, mm -hmm. people are struggling to try to make the next twenty, thirty dollars to pay their utility bills. Mm -hmm. All around the world. It's not just here in the United States. It's very difficult. We've had mm -hmm. to, you know, go and get legislation to give people a living wage, $15 mm -hmm. an hour. And then you go and all of your expensive has went up 20, 25%. Mm -hmm. Here, you know, you'll have a one bedroom apartment 
$1,700 a month. Mm, you know, people expensive. just are not able to survive. And they said, we'll save and have three months of your expenditures in the yes. bank. Well, yes. you know, that's a pipe dream because yes. here they're paying $3,000 a month mortgage. Who's got $9,000 just sitting around? Yes. How yes. do we stabilize? That's what I'm saying. Just, just stabilize. Just try to take care of the basic necessities. You've got childcare that's absorbed it. Groceries, utilities, our gas is set. It was up to $7 a gallon. I can't convert that to liters, but let me tell you, it's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. What do we do in these times to look at our finances and just stabilize? We're not talking about investing. We're not no. talking about trying to get that six figures just mm -hmm. to survive. Mm -hmm. And it very much is the biggest thing that I've found who are, with people who are just trying to survive and you're, you're spot on. I mean, it's very easy to say you're going to attract all this money and you're going to make all this money, but a lot of people are just trying to get through from pay to pay. And a lot of it starts with um, people being too scared to look at their money and just hoping, fingers crossed, that it all is going to work out. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, you really do have to understand what your situation is. And in a lot of ways, understanding your situation is more than just actually understanding what I've got to do today. It's actually understanding what you've got to do for the next month or couple of months or what the possibilities are. But it's got to look at what do you spend your money on? And I mean, a lot of people are cutting back. They're really cutting back in terms of they don't do things like they don't go out for takeaway anymore because they can't afford it. And they have to not get certain things on their shopping list because they can't afford it, that sort of thing. And what happens is that they start focusing on all the bad things that are happening. There are always other ways you can look at it. Okay, so this is your situation now. We Why don't we look at what's possible for you in the future? And admittedly, you've got to somehow struggle through pay to pay to pay. But do you have skills or talents or something that you can use to bring some money in? Is there some way... You can you, say you like doing sketches of dogs or say you like doing drawings. Have you ever thought about going to the local park and doing sketches of dogs and then maybe offering to look after dogs for a little bit of extra money? Do you right. have any skill or any talent that you can use to subsidise your pay? Mm -hmm. The whole thing is, and I mean, I am, I have been there. I know what it's like to have no money coming in. I know what it's like. I can remember still very vividly sitting on my front yard um, and having a look outside and there are all these people walking by and they're all sit waving and everything seems so hunky-dory. I don't have a job. I don't have money coming in. I've got to somehow find money to come and pay for my foods, my house and all that sort of stuff. I have no idea where it's all going to come from. You start going on this downward spiral everything is going to, it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's getting worse. What I had to do one day is I thought, right, this is not working for me. This is just not working. I've got to do something. So if it's not working, what can you do? The first step is to actually understand what your picture is. Right. Then you've got to really understand where you want to go. What is it you really want to do? As a little tip, you know, for example, if you decide you know, say you're going to buy a car and you may or may not afford it, but say you're going to buy a car, you're going to buy a yellow Toyota, be secondhand, I don't really care, but you what you decide you're going to buy a car. Then you start going down the road or driving down the road. Guess what you see everywhere? Yellow Toyotas. Because all of a sudden, they weren't there yesterday and then all of a sudden they're there today. It's about your mind, how you actually approach it. If you're going to shut down and say, this is my situation, there is no hope, then it's going to be very hard for you to see. If you're going to say, I'm going to be a bit more open to opportunities that come out and start shifting the way you think about your life, like I had to. I could have just said, this is all too much. I can't do it. I'm going to shut down. I'm not quite sure what the hell is going to happen, but it's going to happen because I can't see a way out. Well, it's about so my, manifestation, about mindset, and also what you want to sacrifice. A lot yeah. of times people don't, again, you have to look, that was very on point, what you said, looking at that financial snapshot, you will get bills in the mail and just shove them to the side. 
I've got a girlfriend. It was so funny. She hadn't been to her mailbox in 30 days to the point where the mail man returned all of her postage. Yeah, and I'm saying you have to look at it. Um, you do. If you don't really realize what it is, you can't figure out a strategy no. to make it better. No. You know, and also, I think there's a lot of shame attached to it. So, yes, you're right. Because, And, I mean, I'm a very private person. So here I was in this really difficult situation. I didn't know what I was going to do, didn't know how I was going to do it. And then I happened to have watched a movie, believe it or not, um, and it was something that was going around in that stage. Um, the se the key, the key secret, the secret it was. That's what it was. It was okay. a secret. My and I happened to... Nichols uh, was in that movie. Yeah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, see, I was sitting outside. And, um, I mean, it's no, it's not um, an exaggeration at all. But I'm sitting out there and I've got a glass of wine because I can afford a glass of wine even though I can't afford other things. I can afford my glass of wine. And I'm sitting out there with a glass of wine and I'm looking at the German Shepherd, um, the family German Shepherd running backwards and forwards and the people walking by. And I'm thinking, it's two months to Christmas. Am I going to make it to Christmas? Um, and it was so, so deep that I sort of thought, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Anyway, and I'm emotional because it was very deep at that time. Anyway, I ended up going inside and I thought, I've got to do something. I've got to shift the way I'm thinking. If I want to survive, I need to shift the way I'm thinking. So I went inside and it just so happened. And it's amazing how just that simple decision, I've got to do something. I'm going to change what I'm, I'm thinking. And I turned, I went in. I don't watch TV during the day. But I was desperate to do something to shift where my mind was going. So I sat down and I had turned on a Netflix because, again, <laughs> don't have much money, but we can afford Netflix. Right. Anyway, yeah, turned it on and I up came this thing called The Secret. And it, and I just turned it on because I went to go and get something to eat. Um, and it started and something drew me back and I started watching it. And what it was talking about was very much about your mindset. How do you think so? You think you can't afford it? Sure you can. The world will keep giving you what you think you deserve, not what you do deserve. What you do deserve, you deserve. we all deserve an exceptional life. We all deserve an abundant life. And it all sounds words, abundant and exceptional and all that sort of stuff. When you're struggling, seems like fairy tale stuff. But once you start to be willing, just be willing, to start thinking about what opportunities are out there, then you can start to say, right, this is my situation. This, this is not what I want to do. Okay, what do you want to do? Get clear about what you want to do. Get very clear about what you want to do. Have it so that it's so real that that is where you want to go. If it's the kids, yeah. if it's the family, be really clear. Clarity is can't be underestimated. The more clear you are, like the yellow Toyota, I want a yellow Toyota, I want whatever, and you're so clear about it, guess what? You start seeing yellow Toyotas. Now, if you want opportunities in your life with your finances, you have to shift your mindset just like I did because you have to be willing, just willing in the beginning to realise that there are other opportunities. So yeah, then, I'm like, excited about those opportunities too. Again, like yeah. you already have to see it in your mind. You already have to manifest it. So now mm. you've got clear mm. and you've got so a now. strategy and you have a plan. So now you've morphed that into helping and coaching others. Tell me a little bit yes. about that. Yeah, so I have, I actually deal with people across the spectrum and um, it was started, my business was actually started because I wanted to help somebody else as well so my business started I helped myself out and then she came she was in a separate situation and then Budget 101 Academy was born um, but now I deal with people from all spectrums so in other words I have people who can't afford stuff so I have free options because what I want to do is help them shift out of that mindset of I can't afford I can't do this so we have the free sections and then I start to progress to those. Once you progress out of that, which I have people working all the way up through the categories, and then we start off, okay, so what's something cheap that we can sort of start to 
you know, move you up the scale. And then as you get more and more, we sort of grow up the levels. But I am, my business is about helping people never having to go through what I went through before, when in my life, is to stop the suffering. I mean, the suffering that people go through and they see that there's a shame with it and a lot of people out of shame. I mean, suicide is not uncommon at all by any stretch for across the ages for people who are in a financial situation and they won't come and ask for help. So that's what the free sections are for. You don't have to ask for help. You just come and see that and say, oh, I'm interested in finding out more. And then you get the free opportunities that, can, you know, that I'm but more you know, than willing to share. I, I like to keep it 100 with my, with my brains, um, Michelle, is that sometimes people never understand the value in the valley. They keep getting themselves in this cycle over yes. and over and over again. We'll talk yes. about the shopaholic. Okay. Yes. I went through that phase. Girl, I would have a pair of shoes, but not one pair of shoes. I'd have that pair of shoes in three different colors. For what? I'm not going to wear all of those clothes. Now you should see, I have a side of my closet that is just, you know, when I'm going out and I have another side of my closet that's casual. And uh, I'm going to get lint balls on the ones that are just casual. It's your priorities, what yes. is important to you when you look at this? If buying yourself shoes is important, then you set aside and you say, look, I'm going to buy Absolutely. myself a pair of shoes. I'm not going to, it's like dieting. Um, yeah. I'm not going to deprive myself. However, I'm going to manage myself. Hmm. What is it that you're able to extract from your budget? You know, is it that gourmet coffee? Is it eating out? Do you realize how much money? Just write it down. Every time you yes. go out to eat, just write it down. Mm -hmm. See how Absolutely. much it is at the end of the week. When you are going to work every day, are you going out to lunch with the girls or are you packing a lunch? Are you mm -hmm. buying groceries? You know, with mm -hmm. your children, set aside money for recreation. We're going to go to the movies, but you know what? Do like I do. Pop your popcorn and put it in your purse. Bring you some water or whatever. I went to the movies the other night. It was $45 for the two of us. Wow. Just, just to get in popcorn and a beverage, $45. Yes. So it's a, my living is expensive. Cash. You got a family of three. Hmm. Are you renting? Um, maybe you want to look at, you know, where you're living. Can you downsize? Hmm. You know? But also, I mean, you talk about going to the movies and all that sort of stuff. It's amazing what we afford, even though we can't afford it. So the question is, um, like going to the movies, is it worth doing something at home? So you've got a TV, making a movie night and making that a really special movie night at a quarter of the price at home, and making it a special event there. You have to do something that's special. There, if you feel totally deprived, then you're going to keep on thinking that same sort of mindset thinking, which is I can't afford. But there are so many ways, and you're right in the fact that do you get coffees? Do you just simply go down and buy bottles of water? Do you have a very strict shopping plan that you actually stick to? Right. Do you right. have anything scheduled into your your life? So do you and your partner or you actually have a weekly or a monthly uh, budgeting date, for want of a better thing, where we say, okay, this is where we're at. What can we do to actually change our situation? Mm -hmm. Do you treat it like a day so that it takes away that sting of the fact that you're talking your finances? Absolutely. Go and schedule a spaghetti night or something, whatever is the cheapest around wherever you want, or do something really special once a month, really special where you actually have to change that conversation around money. And you look now, forward to it. You yes. know, it's, it's holiday time. And I yes. tell people all the time, what you have to do is, you know, you're making the retailers rich. Mm. Mm. Do something beautiful. You know, maybe have a craft night where you make mm. something from the heart. If it's Absolutely. Art, if it's woodworking, if it's jewelry, someone will appreciate that a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. And scale back. Teach your children to appreciate simplicity, not opulence. Yes. Because yes. we're not always going to have opulence. No, no. And we we aren't. I mean, there are people who are by, let's say, for example, people who like to investigate everything before they go and purchase it. And then there are the emotional buyers. And they're the ones who like something, see something, and buy it. And often they're the ones who can who can find themselves in tricky situations because they don't think about the money. The budget's gone. 
But this is where it's certain things like I have that are free, which I look at money personality. What, what, how do you see money? What's your relationship with money? One of the biggest things that I have found that really makes people think about money is I ask them to write a letter to money as if it was a person. Mm -hmm. So we, we say um, that money, we create a personality for money, whether we think we do or we don't. We create a personality around money. It's evil, it's this, it's that, it's all. Is it good? Is it a benefactor? Is it kept? But then if you ask, if I ask you and I say, so if you were going to describe to me what your relationship with money was, who was that? That's ridiculous. Yeah, okay, we'll treat it like it's treat it like it's a family member. Now, I, what I want you to do is go home tonight and I want you to write a letter to this family member whose hat name happens to be money and I want you to write out everything you feel about your relationship with money. And it starts to, if you just let it all hang out, it's amazing what comes up. So all of a sudden you start to realise, well, actually, how can I, and then if you if you have that relationship with that person and if you made that person, that money personality, bring it into life and make it, made it a person, would you ever invite that person into your house? Don't think so because you have so much hate around what it means and what it's doing to you that you would shun it completely. So. Why are we suddenly saying that this money, this tool, we are actually going to start attracting into our life if we hate it so much? Well, you know, I took it a step further. I did that same exercise. But what I did was on the back side of that paper is I had money respond. Mm. Oh, that's a really good idea. You yeah. know, and really, what does that look like? How am I giving you so much power? How am I giving you so mm. much control? Uh, how am I shifting? How am I making it work for me instead of me working for it? How mm -hmm. am I tucking a little bit away? I know it's hard. I know it's it hard. Is. But it is that, hard. that 20 or like $25 at the end of the month is $100. That yeah. $100 at the end of the year is $1,200. Twelve. Mm. No. $1,200. Right. But you know look at also yeah. your investments. A lot of people use their 401k for, uh, as a personal slush fund. That's a tax liability. You know, now I know that you may have to go into it and get it, but if you go into it and get it, make sure that you utilize and maximize that to the fullest potential mm -hmm. that you, you can. Like you said, have a side hustle, have a little yeah. part-time job. You know what I've done uh, when sometimes when I was broke, I go through my house and see what it is that I really don't need. Like mm -hmm. those three or four pairs of shoes that still have the price. They're out of sale. Yeah. I go outside and have a garage sale, but I trick it out. Yes. I put yes. some music. I put the little yeah. outfits together. I have a free cycle area. And I'm telling you, two, $300 just like that. Can I suggest to you, though, that, that is what that's showing about me, about you, is your mindset about money. Let's make this a hustle. Let's make this into something where I can really get some money in. What if you approach that same garage sale but you did it with, I'm not going to make much money anyway. You had it stuck at the bottom of a shelf. People maybe, maybe didn't walk by because you saw it couldn't really be by the, well, what's the point in advertising it? Because nobody's going to come by anyway. You see what I'm talking about, the mindset shift? You showed really clearly there that what you did is you shifted your mindset. I'm going to make some money out of this. I am looking after my family and I'm going to do this. So let's make it into an event. Let's make it something that people want to come to. And let maybe you have kids who do a lemonade drive and they sell the lemonade. Make it into something. How? And the question is, like you start and you, you get very clear and it, it's something you can apply to anything in your life. Firstly, as I said, the clarity. Then it's very much about what, why do you want to do this? What, what are you doing about it? And it's very much about looking, what is it that I want to get out of this event? I want money. How am I going to do this? Well, what I can do is, and you write down the things. So you're going to have a garage sale. I want to raise how much? Be, be, be adventurous. Put a figure in there. Excuse me. And you put a figure in there and then you start to create stuff to make that figure happen. All right. So let's ask, some, let's ask some fun things about you, Michelle, because we've done the heavy lifting with really <laughs> educating and encouraging people to do the right thing. Mm. Say right now, you won the lottery. We'll use round figures. You, personally, 
won $10 million. What would you do with that money? You. Me personally? Yeah. Oh, uh, apart from the fact, I mean, now I'm pretty well set up with my house and all that sort of stuff, but I have a program that I want to set up, a suicide program for people who are in financial distress. To me, it's things like that that I would want to get into. I'd be working more with kids in the streets, those who, that's where I, I would be going. See, and I wouldn't be going you and hear what she said, Brains? The first thing that she would do would be philanthropic. The first thing that she would do is pay it forward. What you have to understand is that you have to keep this machine running. I have a cup yes. right here. Uh -huh. And everything inside the cup yeah. is for me. Anything that spills over the other side of the cup is for others. That's mm -hmm. the say, let your cup runneth over so that you yes. are able to help other individuals. Let me ask Absolutely. you more fun questions about you. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, what appliance would you be, Michelle Webb? What would I be? I'd be a popcorn machine. Really? Why? Why would I be a popcorn machine? Because you put a few things in and you get all this stuff coming out and it just flows. Have you seen the, you know, when popcorn machines, they just keep flowing over. Well, I that's popcorn popcorn. I'd be the spice yeah. grinder. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like to, I like to chop it up, mix it up and make it spicy. I what? love that. If you yeah. had three wishes, what would those wishes be? Anything. I would wish that we would be a lot more compassionate with one another. And, and I'm talking and I'm talking helping those who really need it and being open to understanding where people are at. I would wish that people at special occasions actually have a good time so christmas time um special events i would want that to really be a family building event not what a lot of people do where they suffer um they see what they can't have and then i would wish strangely enough this is going to sound totally out of out of whack it's got nothing to do with this I would actually like to um, have an animal sanctuary wow. because, yeah, it's totally out of left field. But to me, animals are incredible lessons for us all. We see so much in them. And you can see time and time again, if you were bringing people who are struggling in and you're work there working with animals that are well looked after and all that sort of stuff, do they leave with this massive smile on their face and this massive sense of hope? because animals have a way of making people get in touch with their core and feel love and accepted. Um, to me, love and acceptance of yourself is probably one of the key things to help you start growing to where you, who you want to be and where you want to go. And being authentic and being true to that. Well, you yeah. have been a wealth of information, Michelle Webb. Yes, you have. And I thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how we can get in contact with you, any current offerings or programs that you have set up for right now. Certainly. If I think the easiest way to get in contact would be to uh, go to my website, which is budget101academy.com. It's all one word. And down in there, you can start to, I always have events that are there. I have run free masterclasses. They're always put up there. But there's a, a um, little free knowledge uh personality thinking profile thing that you can actually download from there which gives you some insights into how you think and that can be a really useful tool as well but you can message me from there i think just and that is a one point of call it has everything on there that you need so budget101academy.com um and i look forward to meeting anybody who wants to go on the journey and i take work with people from the beginning all the way through to the end you know again like she says she has cradle to grave a service brain. cradle to grave <laughs> that's, right. that's right and i absolutely and love that. exactly and i appreciate and respect that but what you have to do is number one be honest mm -hmm. get clear mm -hmm. get your dreams and aspirations and put it into action four simple yeah. steps oh five the most important contact michelle webb because she's going to tell you <laughs> what to do. And whether you're in Australia or you're on Mars, 
Yes. Uh, yes. And the I mindset, even take people from beyond that. Keto, yeah, the mindset is the same. Is good. Mm. Oh, and it's it not is. just for older people. You want to no. catch it before you get too old because that's a scary thing too. You know, you're mm, looking at it long term. Mm. Some people don't have anyone that's going to take care of them. No. Sometimes you've got pieces of property that you have not set up in a living will and trust. You don't have your paperwork together. Some mm. people are worried about the tax collector. You can set all of this up again by getting clear, creating a vision, setting your mindset, and talking to Michelle Webb. Thank you so much. I welcome you, you to come back, visit us, give us some tips. Uh, that we can all use because money is on our mind or are we minding our money here on the air? Oh, I love that. Thank you, April. Very, It's been a pleasure. Thank all you right. for my very first time on podcast. So thank all you right. very well, much. We're going to make it work for you. Bye, Brains. Bye.